you know what a mandate is. Sometimes people run for office don't know. How does the federal overreach affect the state of Georgia in the way of mandates? Would you oppose federal mandates, funded or unfunded? He's already responded to that. The last question was, both, and we had, at that time we had two candidates. Both of you are lawyers, so I'm sure you're familiar with the Ninth and Tenth Amendments to the U.S. Constitution. Give us your best interpretation of these amendments. I think everybody would agree he's pretty much uh, answered uh, that as well. Uh, were you going to read this dossier off about? Well, I think it's important because, uh, you know, often people have these real fancy brochures made up and send mass mailings out talking about their Ronald Reagan Republicans. And again, in a place like Troop County, Muskogee County, Harris County, that's pretty, uh, Oh, that's a wise thing to do. But Josh is not someone who just come in the last minute. Uh, I'm going to read this off. Ellen was going to read it. But uh, <laughs> it says, Josh McCoon was born in Columbus, Georgia, graduating from Brickstone School. After graduating, Josh majored in political science and communication at Furman University, which is a good old Baptist university, right? Where he began his, in earnest his lifetime commitment to conservative politics. Josh received his law degree from the University of Alabama, and continue his political growth while working on the Republican nominee's campaign for governor. He became a member of the State Bar of Georgia and the Alabama State Bar and practiced law with the firm of Page, Scranton, Sprouse, Tucker, and Ford in Columbus for several years and currently practices with McCoon and Associates. Josh has been active in the community, serving on the board of United Way of, Mus of Chattahoochee Valley, the Urban League of Greater Columbus, the Muscogee County Juvenile Drug Court, Muscogee County Junior Marshal Program, and Big Brothers, Big Sisters Advisory Committee. He also served in the Kids and Justice Committee of the State Bar of Georgia and has co coordinated the Regional Mock Trial Program for high schools in Columbus. Josh is a member of the Rotary Club of Columbus and has been active in his day career day program to provide opportunities for high school students. Josh has had a passion for public service for many years. Upon his return to Columbus, Josh formed the Muscogee County Young, Repu Young Republicans. Under his chairmanship, it grew to be the largest Young Republican organization outside of Metropolitan Atlanta. Josh was honored with the Man of the Year Award by the Georgia Young Republican F Federation. Josh went on to be elected chairman of the Muscogee County Republican Party. He has played a vital role in the Columbus Division of Common Cause Georgia, an organization committed to openness, transparency, and honesty in local government. And uh, Gloria, when's the first time you ever saw Josh McCoon? Remember? Last April 15th? We, and Ellen myself went over to the, the tax, the, the, the um, tea party they had over there. Josh was one of the two organizers with a lady named Sandy Toth that helped put that on. As I mentioned, he just got, got back, but Josh has been real active in the Republican Party. He's come out and sp spoken to the ladies, uh, young, uh, I keep calling it young women. So, so what, did, that's it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> we have a bunch of these ladies here today. And Josh is also a parishioner at St. Anne's Church in Columbus, Georgia, and resides in Columbus, in the city of Columbus. So with that, um, has anybody got any questions? Like, Oh, Ford McLean, I, you ready for this one? <laughs> yes, sir. No, no, Ford. To hear your question. Uh, I taught briefly about three semesters in the Troop County school system, high school level, and uh, I was amazed to find we have young people graduating who cannot read. Uh, we have teachers who go in every day dreading the fact that they've got specific students that are disciplined problems. They send them to the office, the office sends them back, and it's just a, a revolving door. And uh, there are students who want to learn. And these students are being deprived of an education or of a better education because uh, of these students who, number one, can't read, number two, are discipline problems. I continue to hear people tell me that we've got a great school system here. This cannot be. What would you, as a, a state senator, do to try to solve this problem. And I know it's not more money. <laughs> no, I, I agree that the answer is not more money. Um, 
let me let me respond to that. Um, first, I, I want to tell you a, just a very brief story. Uh, I had a client um, about two years ago who is a school teacher in Columbus, and she had one of these problem students that you're talking about. She repeatedly asked uh, for the student to be um, referred into a uh, a special education program because of some of the issues the student was dealing with. Eventually, uh, the, she was refused several times. Eventually, uh, the student um, got violent with her. Uh, she suffered some pretty significant injuries, um, and that's kind of where I came into the picture. Um, in all of these situations, um, what we kept coming back to was, well, there's a state policy about how you you can just redirect the child you can't you know you can't lay a hand on them you can't really do anything um, she couldn't really even defend herself during the attack for fear of uh, what might happen to her from an employment perspective um, I hear from a lot I, I've spent a lot of time over the last uh, eight or nine months meeting with teachers meeting with principals and what I've heard over and over again is I spend more time on paperwork for No Child Left Behind or for the State Department of Education, and that's all time that's being taken away from classroom instruction. Um, so what I'm going to propose to you is certainly not a panacea to the problem, but I think that what we need to do is let the teachers teach and the principals run the schools and let's get rid of the federal and state bureaucracy and allow the people who are there with the children to educate them. I think that would go a long way and give them a free hand to do their job. Let's not uh, impose from Atlanta or from Washington uh, the way that we're going to educate the children in every school district. I mean, I can tell you even within this district, even within District 29, the, popu the student populations and where they're going in Muskogee County, in Meriwether County, in Troop County, and in Harris County are very different. Um, why, why would we impose a one-size-fits-all approach? So I think the answer, at least part of the answer, is restoring local control. Yes, sir. My, uh, my pet peeve, you were talking about bureaucracy earlier, is the Georgia lottery. Uh, I'm not against the lottery. My problem is the Board of Regents consistently raises the tuition on our college students to where some of them are working two or three jobs right now, trying to make ends meet, and their grades are going down. But yet they've created this giant bureaucracy called pre-K that looks to me like nothing but a minority jobs program. And then my other concern is, is the head of the lottery just gave bonuses to all the lottery employees but yet we're still raising the tuition on our college students. Uh, could you address that for me? Thank you, sir. When the lottery was first adopted, uh, people talked about the experience that Florida and some other states have, have had, which is where eventually there's a plateau in revenue, and then you get into a situation where you're not able to fund these promises that you've made. Um, I think that uh, certainly the bonus issue, which I've been reading about, and I haven't, I haven't read all the law that, that controls that yet, uh, but I'm looking into it. Uh, I think that what we have to do, again, is we have to get away from a, uh, a bureaucracy, a, a fairly bloated bureaucracy, um, and subject it to some serious scrutiny. And let's see where is the money going? Where is all this money being spent? Because there is an awful lot of money being spent. And maybe... A, a lot of it is going to a worthy cause, but again, we've got to make some, some fairly tough decisions. And I understand the regent system, and I respect the independence of, of the regents, um, but we need to look at uh, everything needs to be on the table right now. We need to be looking at every department of state government to try to find the savings wherever we can find it. I hope that addresses your, your question.